1903, the Wright brothers took off at Kitty Hawk. They remained in the air for 12 seconds at a maximum height of nine feet. The result is this. everybody's doorstep has been created in 50 years or less a world of flashing propellers shimmering jet streams gleaming shapes a world so exciting that it's sometimes hard to dim focus Airports around the globe, passengers are now leaving on regular scheduled flights at a rate of more than 70 millions a year. Some are already old hands in the air, but for many there's still the thrill of novelty. The bustle of preparations all around, and behind the scenes too, there are operations. Who's traveling today? Passenger Margaret Fleming for one of Kilmarnock, Scotland, bound for a Clavic, Northern Canada via Montreal. Excess baggage? It's those last minute presents for the kids. Passenger Kofi Ajine of West Africa for another, going from Accra up country to Tamale on urgent business. And here in Bombay, to decide with an overnight flight ahead and young Mira in her arms. Won't be long now, they're loading the baggage. Each passenger gets a free allowance of baggage. On a long distance flight, it adds up to about two tons in the hold. Then there's the mail, mountains of it. These days, the air carries the equivalent of 15 million letters around the world every week. And again, who traveled? Juan Perez of Caracas, Venezuela, with some routine things to see to in Maturin. Briefcase bulging and a lot to do en route. Minoru Yamata, aged 18, from Tokyo to California, USA. His first venture into the big world alone. And from Burlington, Vermont, Dorothy Gerstein and Irene Cooper, school teachers, with three weeks to see the Middle East and bring it home. Who travels? Everybody used to be for the first-class few, but now, with tourist fares, the heirs for all, for the world, his wife and child. And sometimes even his goose. Goodbye, good trip, and happy landing. This is the captain speaking to you from the flight deck. We're about to take off now. Fasten your lap straps, please. And no smoking till we're airborne. Thank you.
craft herself. What of her? She'll probably be a Douglas, a Bowie, or a Lockheed Constellation, a Convair, or a Vickers Viscount. She'll weigh as much as 60 tons and carry a crew of up to 10. She'll travel at 300 miles an hour or more and fly at any height from 5 to 30,000 feet. Your Fox Dodd November 2 to Amsterdam. Cross Epsom 2000, 7 Climb under radar and obtain 15,000 feet. Runway 17 to wind south southwest 5. Hotel Fox Troll, your traffic is Tinson now on final and DC3, leaving patrol outbound, heading for 180 degrees. Over. Clipper 100, you're cleared to taxi to runway 25 left by taxiway Charlie and runway 13 left. out from the aprons to the runways. Slowly turn and stop for the final check. Before takeoff check, please. Auto feathering. Arm green light on. Alternators. Reset on. Bolt is normal. Propeller pitch. Fully fine. Mixture control. Auto rich lock on. Fuel valves. Check tank to engine. Booster pump. On normal. Generators. All on. Ignition switches. Check down both. Controls and trim tabs. Controls are free. Engines ready for takeoff. Ready for takeoff. Ready for takeoff, sir. Stand by for takeoff. from any other. The engines settle to their cruising note. The galley gets down to work. How to keep people occupied through a long, smooth, steady flight across the blue dome of the sky. Books and magazines, of course. Route maps and picture postcards for the aunt you forgot to say goodbye to. How to keep people occupied? This is one way that never fails. Outside, as the hours and distances roll by, what will the clouds reveal? Perhaps it will be this island, dreaming in the Bahamas, San Salvador, where less than five centuries ago, the cry of a lookout on the Pinta's forecastle 
told Columbus he had found a new world. Perhaps it will be these wild shores of Newfoundland where the long ships of Leif Erikson scudded through the storms on their way to Vinland. Or it may be the Arctic regions, where caribou thunder across the white world of the furthest north. Or you may glimpse these gleaming snakes of water gliding through the eastern jungles. Mekong, Chindwin, Brahmaputra, Irrawaddy. It may be Lake Tana in the heart of Ethiopia, where drifting spume and flashing rainbow guard the birthplace of the Blue Nile. down into the tremendous mouth of Popocatapetl, towering 18,000 feet above the sea, crater within crater. Or it may be some testament to bygone human splendor, like Machu Picchu, city of the Incas, lifting its blind walls from the gorges of the Andes to the mansions of the sun. Or yet again, your path across the sky may lead you through the very summits of the world. painful ages, men have schemed and died to do just this, to lord the hemispheres. What has brought us now this sudden swift success? The genius of the peoples, all of them. But as much as the brilliance of the scientists and the daring of the pioneers, it's been the patience of the organizers. Patience and collaboration. This is a body of which little is heard, IATA, the International Air Transport Association. Its present Director General is Sir William Hildred of Great Britain. IATA's members are the international airlines, about 75 of them all told. They inherited a world of regulations made for caravans and wagon trains and sailing ships. Progressively, they've freed the sky from this archaic outlook hammered out a common order, common codes and standards. Argument, competition, cut and thrust. But out of it all, the air has emerged as an outstanding instance of international good sense. Look beyond the conference room at how it works in practice. Look, for example, at this aircraft, approaching the shores of the Levant. They've just three weeks, remember, to see the Middle East. Three weeks, and so much to see. Let's not go here, let's go there instead. But what about the tickets? Can we change them? It's tempting to hold on to all the traffic you can get, especially when your airline's a source of national pride. But the logic of a world moving at 300 miles an hour is a system that gives as much freedom of movement as the sky itself. Freedom to change plans in mid-air, shift from one line to another. The result? A universal agreement to make tickets interchangeable. And the interline adjustments, compensations, transfers of currency, 
passengers shouldn't be bothered with all that. And besides, that's what accountants are for. Or this aircraft, crossing northern Venezuela from Caracas to Maturin. He set out with a lot to do en route. Export-import business, forms to fill in, cargoes to move, and buyers waiting for them. And just as one ticket takes a passenger around the world, so one airway bill will take a piece of freight to anywhere. And what do the freighters haul? The faithful, plodding cargo planes you don't hear much about. Almost anything these days, from isotopes and oysters, to machines and magazines. Some lines carry more animals than human beings. And there's always the heavy stuff. There's a brisk movement of nylon stockings over the Atlantic, of sausage skins from Iran to the stockyards of Chicago. They say air cargo is in its infancy. But you can see the scale it's moving into. Or this plane, heading out over the Pacific, eastbound from Japan. His first venture into the big world, and his first visit to a crew in the cockpit. What makes a crew? Training, and above all, training up to standards accepted everywhere. And here, another body makes its contribution. The International Civil Aviation Organization, an agency of the United Nations. Concerned with the intergovernmental aspects of flying, one of ICAO's functions is to provide technical assistance to countries becoming air-minded. Where safety is concerned, nationalism has no place. In training for airline work, you've got to make sure that a Mexican pilot can land an American plane under instructions from an Indian controller using Dutch radio equipment. Cruiser, out in mid-Atlantic, bound for Montreal. In 1927, the spirit of St. Louis made the crossing in 33 hours. Margaret Fleming now in 14. But Lindbergh didn't have the international support behind him that she does today. There are 21 of these ships maintaining nine weather stations in the North Atlantic. They fly the flags of different nations, but they're all doing the same job, finding out for the aircraft passing overhead what the weather's going to do. Ships, in turn, are meshed in with hundreds of weather stations around the world. It never stops. Observations recorded round the clock over land and sea, transmitted halfway across the globe, assessed, interpreted, collated through half a dozen languages, and passed back to where they're needed in the cockpit. Athènes, Beirut. Ciel nuageux, 4 à 6 huitième, par strato, Q et Q, base 2500 pieds, sommet 18 000 pieds. Localement, cumulonimbus, sommet 30 000 pieds, avec risque orage. 
Or again, this aircraft, heading up country from Accra over the hot hills of Africa. Going to Tamale on urgent business. Half an hour yet. Those engines out there, keep it up. A few minutes might make all the difference. Standards again. For behind the steady note of all the engines flying in all the aircraft, there's a common code of maintenance. Visual checks, terminal transit checks, rated checks, and after every 1,400 hours or so in the air, complete strip down and overhaul to the inmost innards of the plane. Nothing left unexamined. All this, halfway out from Bombay, over the Arabian Sea. Time, midnight. Sleep well, mirror, in your cradle in the sky. Up ahead, there are men on the flight deck, listening to the unseen sounding beacons of the dark, charting your pathway through the stars. Sleep well in your cradle in the sky. Beneath you, a continent astern an ocean ahead, men are watching your progress through the arch of night. This might be almost anywhere. It happens to be a village called Pucalpa, miles from anywhere in the heart of Peru. You wouldn't think Pucalpa and the air had much in common, but you'd be wrong. groceries and hardware. Doesn't forget Old Manual's medicine. On the return trip, it takes the local produce out to market. And these days, Pucalpa's typical. Millions of people who have never flown themselves are looking to the sky for life and livelihood. Move to Brussels, London or New York and see the same thing only more so. Over the big cities, just as in the far-off outback, people are taking the air for granted, using it to commute to the office, keep an urgent business date. And this alone poses one of the biggest problems for the future, for the air is filling up, getting crowded, almost like the roads. 
Here's one way they're tackling the problem. A traffic school of the sky. Indianapolis ATC, this is East and 747. The operators are feeding information on the speed and direction of imaginary planes to a central Indianapolis plotting room. ATC, this is East and 747 over Maxwell intersection at 25, 10,000. Estimate Indianapolis at 33. Request change of flight plan to land at Indianapolis. Over. The plotters sort out the approaching aircraft. One receives instructions to stack and circle. Another is given the green light to come in and land. Voices from the clouds calling for instructions. Approaching journey's end. United DC-7, you are now cleared number one to land runway 28 left. The wind is still west-northwest 17. Hello, San Francisco Tower. This is United DC-7, three minutes northwest. Okay, United DC-7, I have you in sight three minutes northwest. Japan here, 002, clear to runway 15. Quebec, first route, you are clear for landing on runway 34. Surface wind 
and in the sending, save just one more life. in Baalbek to realize a dream and take it home. It has put Tokyo on the threshold of San Francisco, opened a horizon wider than the oceans, and it has simply brought together, for no two people living now are more than two days from each other. And who knows how soon the time may come when it will be two hours.